Hello everyone and welcome to Edusol's Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we continue our applied anatomy in relevance to hernia and surgeries for hernia. So we already saw the key concept that we wanted to highlight that is the anterior and the posterior aspects of anatomy that are different. So, so far in MBBS what we have studied is the anterior anatomy. But now when we discuss laparoscopic hernia so commonly, it is important to understand the anatomy from within, that is inside the peritoneum or through the extra peritoneal plane. We also saw the EHS nomenclature for ventral hernia. We saw the umbilical anatomy from posterior aspect. So today onwards, we start the anterior and posterior anatomy of groin hernias and it's going to be very interesting. We will discuss a lot of name structures, name spaces, the Futado's concept of inverted Y and phi triangle, which is, I feel, one of the best concepts that have been there for laparoscopic inguinal hernia anatomy. Towards the end of this series, we will summarize a lot of things that we have seen and some of the commonly asked questions as well. So, as you know, we are discussing the groin anatomy in this video partly and in the next video, the second part will take care of the Futado's classification. So, hip bone, all of us know there are three parts, the ilium, pubis and ischia. I am not going into details of this. The anterior superior iliac spine, these are the important landmarks that we should be aware. The pubic tubercle and the pubic symphysis in the midline. The superior pubic remnants on the inner side is pectin pubis and that is where on the posterior side of superior pubic remnants is the pectineal line. Okay, so the pectineal line goes along the superior pubic ramus and then it goes towards the iliac crest. Okay, and that is why it is known as the iliopectineal line. That is the pectineal line on the superior pubic ramus continuing on the acute line of ilium and this is known as iliopectineal line and the ligament on it is known as iliopectineal ligament. Now, if we draw a line from anterior superior iliac spine to pubic symphysis, the point that is in the middle of this line is known as the mid inguinal point. So, the very commonly asked questions for surface landmarks in practical as well as in exams, MCQs, is the mid inguinal point versus the midpoint of inguinal ligament. So, we will clear that first thing in this series so that it is not confusing in the upcoming video. So, mid inguinal point is the midpoint of the inguinal region. The way to remember is that the inguinal ligament word is not there. So, your line is not the inguinal ligament. So, this is the mid inguinal point. The importance of it is you can palpate the femoral arterial pulsation beneath this area. So now, if we keep that line and the mid inguinal point as highlighted by this cross, the inguinal ligament, as we all know, passes from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. Okay, and it divides this area into a supra-inguinal area which contains the inguinal canal and an infra-inguinal area which has the femoral canal. Remember this because when we see the laparoscopic anatomy, this is going to have a lot of bearing on the Furtado classification. So there is a supra-inguinal area which has the inguinal canal and the infra-inguinal area which has the femoral canal. The midpoint of inguinal ligament is lateral to the mid-inguinal point. As you can see here, the black cross is the midpoint of inguinal ligament and it marks the deep inguinal ring, right? All of us know it marks the deep inguinal ring. Like we discussed in the previous uh, slide, the pectineal ligament is on the pectineal line which is on the superior pubic ramus and that is also known as Cooper ligament. So as we said, there are a lot of named structures in this area. Inguinal ligament is also known as Poppert's ligament, Cooper ligament or pectineal ligament. Now a reflection of inguinal ligament towards the Cooper's ligament is known as the lacunar ligament or the Gimbernet ligament. So three important ligaments in this area that we have seen so far, the inguinal ligament, a reflection posteriorly from the inguinal ligament towards the pubic ramus, 
that is known as the lacunar ligament or the gimbernet ligament and the Cooper's ligament, which is the posterior most structure. So if we again see these structures, you can see that the Cooper's ligament is the posterior most. The lacunar ligament is more on the medial side towards the linea alba, which is the center of the abdomen and the inguinal ligament. So inguinal ligament has two other important parts that are routinely asked. One is the rolled up edge, which is inferior, that is below the inguinal ligament. And it is this interned or the rolled up edge of inguinal ligament or its derivation from lower border of external oblique aponeurosis. This is what forms the floor of the inguinal canal along with lacunar ligament. So this is an important landmark. And the other part of inguinal ligament is the reflected part of inguinal ligament, which is a reflection towards the linea alba. And from there, it attaches to the opposite side of the reflected part of inguinal ligament. So it forms a complete entity on both sides. And that is what is important about this area, okay? So inguinal ligament is the lower border of external oblique aponeurosis. It has an interned or a rolled up edge, a posterior reflection, which is the lacunar ligament, and a superior reflected part towards the linea alba and the opposite side of the reflected part, that is the reflected part of inguinal ligament. Now, all of us know the inferior epigastric artery the deep inguinal ring is located lateral to the inferior epigastric artery. So as we saw in the previous slides, the midpoint of inguinal ligament marks the location of deep inguinal ring. And so the inferior epigastric artery has to be slightly medial to the midpoint of inguinal ligament. So that is something that you can now easily remember. Lateral border of rectus abdominis is somewhere where it is shown in the figure on both sides, but we are seeing more on the left side right now. And this is where the inguinal canal will be located, right? So this is how you can understand the three dimensional aspects of inguinal canal. You can see the deep ring that is lateral to the inferior epigastric artery and the superficial inguinal ring towards the medial end of inguinal ligament. Now the triangle that is formed between these three structures and now it is very easy to remember the inferior epigastric artery, the inguinal ligament and the lateral border of rectus abdominis is the Hazelbeck's triangle which is the area for direct hernias. As we already saw the infrainguinal area takes care of the femoral sheath with its structures and the femoral canal. So this is how the infrainguinal area will look. VAN is how I used to remember. So when you have both sides, it is NAVVAN. Okay. And you can remember the structures easily that way. The mid inguinal point is where the femoral artery will be located. So that is again an important landmark. And vein artery and now in that area. And the medial most structure is the femoral canal. So this is how this area is tricky. But once you understand all the ligaments, it's very easy to understand. So that is what we wanted to share in this video. A very brief overview of the important ligaments, the parts of inguinal ligament, the general overview or the surface landmarks of where you can find the inguinal canal, the femoral canal and the femoral sheath, midpoint of inguinal ligament and mid inguinal point. In upcoming videos, now we will start the laparoscopic hernia anatomy. You will see the Furtado's classification as well as the open inguinal anatomy, which is very commonly seen in different books and commonly asked. So we will have a brief discussion on the open inguinal anatomy and then go towards the laparoscopic inguinal anatomy. This is our website www.learnwithedusor.in. We have a lot of videos, publications, recommended books as well as books from our faculty so you can have a look. Thank you.